Do you ever look at your energy bill? And if you read it, can you actually understand what it says? All these figures and numbers, they may seem daunting to you at first. And as our society is moving towards a more sustainable future, I want everyone to partake in the discussions about these numbers. But as I said, these numbers can be a challenge. So today, I want to help you. I want to reach out and I want to give you the peanut butter perspective. So my body is an engine. Let me elaborate. In the morning, I start with breakfast. And of all the products that are on my breakfast table, peanut butter contains the most calories. Every day, I need around 2500 kilocalories to survive. So how much peanut butter would I need to eat? Well, actually, in this single jar of peanut butter are all the calories I need for one day. Would it be healthy to only eat peanut butter? No, pro probably not. But I can do everything. I can cycle to work, I can give a lecture, I can exercise some, I can keep my body warm and functioning, which takes almost most of the energy. But I can do that all thanks to a single jar of peanut butter. But these calories, as they are in peanut butter, they are all around us. Everything functions like an engine, like my body does. For instance, if I take a car, I put gasoline in there. And there's calories in gasoline, which I burn to get something useful. So there's a similarity between my body and a car. As there is a similarity between any other engine in which I have to put fuel to get something useful, but I also get some waste, and that is the exhaust. I always get carbon dioxide. As I'm standing here, breathing, I'm expelling carbon dioxide from my body, as you are all doing right now. But that's the same for any engine. Let's have a look at my day. In the morning, I start with a shower. And in a boiler, somewhere in my house, water is being heated with gas, and there's CO2 being generated. And the energy it takes to heat the water for my shower is around one third of a jar of peanut butter. Then I go downstairs and I open my fridge and my fridge runs on electricity, which is generated somewhere in an engine. Again, it takes around one third of a jar of peanut butter of electricity to run my fridge. And then I go to work and I cycle, so I'm not wasting any fuels there apart from the peanut butter that I eat. And then I use my PC for a whole day while I'm doing work. Again, one third of a jar of peanut butter. So when starting my day, I not only need the calories in a jar of peanut butter, but I also need the calories in all the engines that I burn and all the carbon dioxide that I breathe out, breathe in, and also the carbon dioxide that I generate in all these engines. So that is one jar for me, and one jar of only these three actions during my day. So there must be many more jars. Let's have a look at our, our electricity bill. And that might seem complicated at first, but we'll get to that. In a year, a Dutch household on average uses 3,600 kilowatt hours of electricity and 1,500 cubic meters of gas. What is a kilowatt hour? What is a cubic meter of gas? I cannot compare these two. The 3600 might seem much larger than the 1500, so that must be the bigger problem, right? And we cannot compare these things. So we're comparing apples to oranges, but it might be better if we just compare it with peanut butter. There's a lot of energy. As I said, I can do everything. But in one jar of peanut butter, there's around three kilowatt hours of electricity or energy stored. However, in a cubic meter of gas, there is three jars of peanut butter. So I want to convert these numbers. So the electricity, I have to divide by three. But at the same time, I have to multiply my gas use by three. Then I get the following numbers. As you can see, the gas that I consume in my house to heat my house and take a shower and a little bit to cook on, contains much more energy than the electricity that I consume. Meaning that apart from the peanut butter that I eat, I consume much more. 
Let's think about these numbers. I eat one jar a day, meaning that I eat around 365 jars a year. But in my house, I consume more than 5,000 jars of peanut butter, meaning that for a jar that I eat, during my day, everything I do, I consume another 10 jars of peanut butter. So we must do better, right? How are we as a society going to move forward? In my opinion, that's a twofold plan. First, we need a sustainable peanut butter source. This <laughs> might seem strange, but it's again these wind, solar, hydro solutions. But that's part of the solution. The second part of the solution is using what we have more efficiently and at the same time wasting less. So let's elaborate these two solutions by looking at myself. In the Netherlands, I can buy solar panels. While it might not be sunny today, on average, we're doing reasonably okay. With one solar panel, I can generate around 300 kilowatt hours. Again, these kilowatt hours. We know that we need to divide by three. One solar panel generates 100 jars of peanut butter a year. How nice would that be, right? Every day, free peanut butter. And I know that I need around 1,200 jars of electricity or peanut butter. So I need to buy 12 solar panels. Now, in my house, I have enough space to fit around these 12 solar panels. And I fixed my electricity demand. But then I'm stuck. I'm stuck with this last bit. It's the gas. Heating my house and taking a shower consumes so much energy that I need to find another solution for that. Because if I want to do this electrically, I need 45 solar panels to generate 4,500 jars of peanut butter. And believe me, I don't have a house that is so big that I can fit 45, 45 solar panels on there. And a great example of how to use your energy efficiently is driving an electric car. In an electric car, there's a relatively large battery. And in that battery, there's energy stored. Let's say 60 kilowatt hours. And we divide this again by three, so we know that in our electric car, there are around 20 jars of peanut butter stored. And it's a huge battery, right? It takes almost half of the car, that battery. But the energy that's contained in that battery is only 20 jars. I can fit that next to me on the, on, the, on the passenger seat. And battery is not energy dense. But the electric car is so efficient that with this little amount of power, I can drive around 300 kilometers. If I would have taken a gasoline car and I would have put 20 jars of peanut butter worth of gasoline in the tank, I would have only been able to drive around 100 kilometers meaning that an electric car is almost three times as efficient as a gasoline car. So that shows that this 4,500 jars of peanut butter that I'm using in my house to heat my house, I can maybe do differently, for instance, with a heat pump and a solar boiler. But this will require a huge societal transition. So for our society to change, we need these twofold solutions. First, we need to generate our peanut butter sustainably. And secondly, we need to use the peanut butter that we can generate more efficiently. So hopefully tomorrow, you will take your energy bill and have another look at it and see how do these numbers affect me? And how can I engage in these discussions that are all around me regarding sustainability? Because I want everyone to partake. And if you partake, I hopefully, Hope that you will also use the peanut butter perspective. Thank you very much.